Hello and welcome to the All Facts video training series. Today's video will cover the basic scanning functions of your Sharp copier. Your machine has several options for scanning a document. Scan to email, scan to network folder, scan to a cloud service such as Google Drive, Gmail, Microsoft OneDrive, and allows you to scan to a USB drive that can be plugged into USB port at the front of the machine. Let's take a closer look at scan to email. At your machine, select the email button. The main scan screen opens. On the left side of the screen are your basic settings. In the upper right corner you have sending history. We'll look at that in just a second. And in the lower right corner you have the start button to initiate your scans. Let's go back to the left side. In the upper left corner, click on address book. This will display the programmed addresses that are stored in your machine. Click on one of the addresses, tell the machine OK, and you would press the start button in the lower right to initiate that scan. Let's go back to the address book. It does allow you to pick multiple addresses. So in this case, we've selected three. We tell it OK. If we hit our start button, the three selected addresses would receive the scanned document. Let's hit clear all. If your address is not in the address book, you have the ability in the address box to input your address. So you touch in the box and you can enter your address here. One thing to note, some network administrators will have this functionality disabled. You will have to go to someone at your office to have them add you to the address book. Something you'll have to check out with your network administrator. Let's cancel that. If you were able to input an address and had to scan later in the day, in the upper right corner is sending history. This will record and save some of the addresses that have been used previously. If you notice, there's a direct entry that was manually keyed in for Bob, and we had scanned earlier to Mac, who was in the address book, something that might be helpful. Below the address bar, you'll see subject. Your machine has a default subject line programmed in. If you'd like to change that and enter your own subject for your scan to email, you could do that here by tapping in the box, clicking direct entry, and entering your subject. Right below subject is the file name box. Your machine by default gives each file a unique name by using date and time. If you would like to replace that name, Click in the file name box, click direct entry, and enter your name. For example, test. When your email is scanned, it would have a PDF file attached named test.pdf. The next series of buttons allow the user to adjust the image quality, size, and format of their scanned document. The first button is the color mode. The machine, by default, is set to Auto Color. The user can select the button and make a change here to that default setting. Mono 2 means pure black and white. The next button is Resolution. By default, your machine is set to 200 by 200 DPI. This will be fine for most text documents. If you're scanning photos or illustrations, you may want to raise the resolution. To raise the resolution, click the Resolution button and here you can make your changes. One thing to remember, the higher the number, the larger the file will be when you create it. In some instances, the file size limitation on your mail server may block these scans, so be careful with high resolution scanning. Next, let's take a look at the file format button. By default, your scan documents will be converted into a PDF file type. If you'd like to make a change to that file type, click on the File Format button and select from one of the choices listed in the for File Format window. Let's take a closer look at a couple of things here. With the machine set on PDF, you have three checkboxes available on the right. The first is OCR. This will make your PDF text searchable basically word by word. So if you had scanned 20 pages and we're looking for Smith, in the document you could search by Smith. The encrypted box 
will allow you to password protect your PDF when it is created. There's no default password. You will create that as you scan the document. If you scan the document to your email and then forward it on, the other party cannot open the PDF without that passcode. The next option for your PDF is the compact feature. This is a high compression PDF kit that will reduce your file size about 65 percent. This can be very beneficial when scanning documents in color. Below that at the very bottom line you have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Your machine can scan and convert certain documents into a Word doc, an Excel sheet, or a PowerPoint presentation. The machine uses optical character recognition or OCR software to make the conversion. Your machine will not convert every document. The accuracy is determined by the quality of the original and the fonts used within the original. At the bottom of the file format window, you see specified pages per file. If you load 10 pages in your document feeder, the machine will make a 10 page PDF one file. If you check specified pages per file, the machine would take and make 10 one-page PDFs. If you want to change the value, have the box check, click on the one and put in the value you need. This is an easy way to separate a document instead of scanning each individual page as a separate scan. Next, let's take a look at the original button. The machine automatically determines the original size and orientation when you load the original in a document feeder or place it on the glass. If you'd like to make changes or manually set an original size, click on the original button and at the top you can click on the scan size button and set a size. Lower right you could change the orientation if need be. And in the lower left you can tell the machine your document is two-sided. At that point, it will scan the front and back of each page. Next, we have the exposure button. The machine uses auto exposure to control the density of the originals as they're scanned in. In some cases, with poor originals, you may be forced to manually adjust the exposure lighter or darker. Additionally, there are several original types listed below that may assist with setting the exposure such as photo and map. At the bottom of the window you have the star, the check, and others. The star would li list any saved settings for scanning. The check would display any current settings for a scan job and others will list all the scanned editing features. Let's take a closer look at the others button. Click on the Others button. The other screen opens. If you notice, you're going to see some terms that you've seen before like Job Build, Original Count, and Dual Page Scan. Job Build, remember from the copy video, that it allows you to scan in a document that's larger than the maximum capacity of the feeder. In some machines it'll be 100, in some machines it'll be 150, but it would allow you to scan in the document in groups of 100 or 150 and then have the entire document scan over. Hit clear all. Dual page scan is just like the dual page copy we looked at in the copy training video. You can open your book, line the binding up with the picture of the book on the back and it will scan both halves of your book and make them individual files. This completes our review of the main scan screen. We are currently in scan to email. If you scan to folder, the screen will look slightly different with one major item uh, being absent. So let's look at the scan to network folder screen. And what's missing is the subject line. All of the other functionality we looked at in scan to email is here in scan to folder except the ability to add a subject line. You can still change the file name there. Let's look at another scanning option on your Sharp Copier. One that can be very beneficial in the event that your network is down and you need to scan a document onto your drive. We're going to go to the machine and plug in a USB drive. The machine will pop up a menu asking us do we want to print from the drive or scan to the drive. 
we'll select scan to the external memory device. Here we have a choice of using the basic or uh, easy function for scan to USB. We're going to hit details. We're going to tell it yes. And here we have the same menu we had with scan to email or scan to folder. The one thing missing is the address book. The machine knows you're going to scan directly onto this drive. If you notice, you have file name, color mode, resolution, file format, all of the things we used earlier in scan to email or scan to network folder. One reminder, with a USB drive, if you take it out and you were sending someone to a meeting with some valuable or confidential information, don't forget, you can hit file format, check encryption, tell it OK, initiate the scan, and it's looking for a passcode. At this point, the passcode could be something as simple as 1, 2, 3, 4, and, and 5. And at that point, the machine will start the scan, tells you not to remove the device, and at that point, the document has been scanned in. That completes our video, and thanks for watching. If you need additional information or support, please visit our website at www.allfacts.com. You can also contact us at our main number at 504-443-0188. On behalf of the entire All Facts team, we appreciate and value your business. Thanks, and have a great day.